The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and we have a special treat for you. We have Lori Leak, who is someone who started with intermittent fasting, and she her starting weight was at 160.2 pounds, and she's currently at 125 pounds. She started doing intermittent fasting starting December 5th. 2018. And so today it's just all about personal stories. So she is just going to share her personal story of what she does, and hopefully it will inspire you to just motivate you in whatever area you're at right now. So Lori, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be with you. Okay. So you're going to notice that Lori's actually moving around right now. And tell us a little bit of why, if you're watching this on video, what are you doing? Well, I'm talking to you while I am walking at my tread desk. So I, when I'm using my computer, I'm typically at my tread desk. I figure why not keep moving when I can do so. And it's a lot healthier than just sitting. So I love it. Yeah. So tell us about what your eating window is. What do you eat during your eating window and just kind of like your evolution? Like, how did you start? Did you, did you start in an eight hour window and then move to a six hour? What did that look like? Okay. Well, first of all, I never wanted to miss a meal or I never thought I would have been a person who fasted. Um, I came to intermittent fasting because I had menopausal weight gain and the weight just kept creeping up little bits at a time, even though I was eating a healthy diet and um, trying to manage my weight, I was trying to hold it back. And I felt, I felt helpless to do so once my hormones changed from menopause. I was using the Trim Healthy Mama diet, which really is based on a principle of separating your fuels using fats and or carbs, but doing that in a in separate meals. And um, so I had been doing that for at least five years and was really happy with it until menopause. When the weight started to creep up and I started to feel a little desperate, I was searching for answers um, all over the internet. And um, that's when I stumbled upon an article written by a man in Australia. His name is Marty Kendall. And he's since rewritten the article. So the name that you can find it under is called Data Driven Fasting. And um, his concept was if you use a glucose meter, it can be your fuel gauge. And so I started using a glucose meter that I got from Walmart, just a rely on inexpensive meter test strips cost me 18 cents a piece. And I started testing my glucose to wait for it to fall down within a certain target number range before I ate. So what happened to my Trim Healthy Mama lifestyle was instead of eating every three to four hours during the day, um, I just started waiting for those glucose numbers to let me know when it was time to go ahead and eat. And I stayed with um, the Trim Healthy Mama principles for quite a while. But then when I got my weight down where I wanted to get it down, I started playing around with junk food. And because I knew how to manipulate my weight up and down according to my glucose numbers and fasting. When I started the fasting process, which I was forced to do by waiting for my glucose numbers, it, kind of, it concerned me. I wasn't sure fasting was healthy. I really bought into that idea that we needed to eat frequent meals in order to keep, to keep our metabolism stimulated and um, not have it slow down on us. And so I was concerned that my fasting was going to backfire on me, that waiting for my glucose numbers to fall was taking me well beyond the three to four hour mark. And a lot of times I was only eating one meal a day. So I did my research on fasting as well. And I encountered um, most of the information I came across was from the keto crowd, the low carb keto crowd. 
And I really didn't want to go in that direction because prior to Trim Healthy Mama, I had been eating a low carb diet for 17 years. I used to be a patient of Joseph Mercola when he was still in clinical practice. And so in working with him, he had me on a low carb diet, basically meat and non-starchy veggies. Um, But then I found Trim Healthy Mama, which I was so happy to find because then I could have everything again, carbs, fats, and proteins. But then of course the menopausal weight became an issue. That took me to using the glucose meter that kind of forced me into the fasting world. But through researching the fasting stuff, um, I realized that I, there were a lot of health benefits to fasting. I'm going to slow down since it might make breath a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> um, I realized there were a lot of health benefits associated with intermittent fasting. And I discovered a... Um, an internist on the internet. She, she's she got a YouTube channel by the name of Dr. Boz, D-R-B-O-Z. And um, I've learned a lot about health from her. It's just that I don't really listen to the whole keto aspect. Keto is one part of my diet now, but I'm also listening to the Mastering Diabetes guys Cyrus Kambada and Robbie Barbaro, Barbaro, um, and you know they are all about high carb, very nutritious, plant based, whole food, high carb diet. So right now, I'm currently going back and forth between the two dietary philosophies of keto or the high carb, very low fat philosophy, and. It's making me extremely happy. And even though I did make wedding weight with using my glucose meter as my fuel gauge, it's actually because of bringing in all these high carb days, I've seen more of a weight drop on those days. um, And I see better insulin numbers. Uh, Insulin ratio is a concept I got from Dr. Annette Bosworth, the Dr. Boz that I just mentioned, where you take your glucose number and you divide it by your ketone number to know what your ratio is. That ratio indicates to you where your insulin is in a, in a range of numbers. And she maintains four major targets to, for people to keep in mind. Um, she says that a ratio of 200 or above indicates you have high insulin. Um, She says, if you want guaranteed weight loss, then fast until your glucose and your ketone ratio is 80 and you'll have guaranteed weight loss. And that is true, but I don't even have to get to that lower ratio to have my weight go down on the bathroom scale. Her next target down is a ratio of 40 of glucose divided by ketones. She says that that is um, a ratio where your insulin is low enough that your immune system starts to repair because you're in autophagy and your old cells and proteins are being used by your body and converted into new material to use. Um, She says if she's working with cancer patients that she likes to see them get down to a ratio of 20. And in the past year and a half that I have been fasting, I have managed to get down to um, into the 20s, but never to 20. I've had a couple of fasts where I got to 26 and 27. But typically when I fast now, I don't make my target much lower than 40, where I want to see my glucose and ketones coming, coming out to a ratio of 40 which is actually where I'm at today. I, um, I'm doing a, a fast to hit that mark and I will break my fast either when I hit that ratio or when I reach 48 hours. Because in all of my fasting practice, um, I have done a couple of 72 hour fasts, but it, they've also been coincidentally, don't know if they're causality, followed by 
um, episodes of vertigo. And so my husband and I talked about it and we just agreed, no, I won't do those 72 hour fasts anymore. I'll stick to a 48 hour fast because he'd really rather not worry about me having vertigo and I wouldn't want to have it. So, well, I want to ask you a little bit more about the glucose monitor that you use and ask you about that. But before I do, I want people who don't really understand, I want to give everyone a little bit of background, but you know, how our bodies use energy is just a more complex process than a lot of people assume Mm -hmm. because it's so much into what your hormones are doing. And insulin is a key hormone involved in fat storage and weight gain. Mm -hmm. And so when your insulin levels are elevated, it impairs the body's ability to burn fat for energy. Correct. And so that is so important. And so it's funny because one time I bought... I actually rented for two weeks and I can't remember, it was very expensive. I think it was like $500 for two weeks. I actually rented a continuous glucose monitor and it's, it's called CGM, a continuous glucose monitor. And it basically, Mm -hmm. it's not even perfect. It doesn't work perfect, but now they're getting out there where they have these continuous glucose monitors where it just, you put it in your body and it's kind of tracking it on a regular basis. Now, did you use, you said you just used the kind that was just like from Walgreens that you, you pricked your blood and just took your, your right. blood. I went, I went to Walmart and I looked at what was available and I bought something that I thought I could afford because the real cost is in test strips. So that's right. They're like, they're usually like $19 or $16. You can even get them on sale for $11.99. Right. But the test strips are the most expensive thing. Exactly. And um, the nephrologist I'm working with, she's um, offered me a continuous glucose monitor that she would prescribe one, but insurance wouldn't pay for it for me because I'm not a diagnosed diabetic. And I don't mind pricking my finger throughout the day. So I'm fine with that. But how many times I want you to be real specific. So what did that look like for you? Like how many times a day did you prick your finger? Um, Because, because to be honest, just so you guys know the the continuous glucose monitor that you can get is not as accurate as the single one anyway. It's okay. the, The one that you prick your finger, it's way more accurate. They even on the continuous glucose monitor, they made me twice a day actually prick my finger anyway, because it needed to calibrate Oh, so it asks you like on, well, the one I had, and it, it might've been an old one and I'm sure they've come up with. So you had ones. to verify your continuous glucose monitor with the finger stick. Yeah. So you ended okay. up having to like monitor it like two or three times anyway, a day. So it's kind of like, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, on average, I test myself probably eight or so times a day, maybe wow. more. Um, but I always check my first morning glucose number when I wake up and then. And what is that number usually for you? It varies. Glucose is dependent upon what you choose for food. So you see after your food choices, you see that reflected in your glucose numbers, um, after meals and in the morning, you can have, um, depending on when you stop eating at the end of the day your glucose number will reflect whether you were having to deal with food through the night and your body was still having to work or whether your your glucose had more time to fall, therefore your insulin had more time to fall. Um, So this morning, I think I had a glucose reading of 87. Um, Okay, that's really good. So I was very happy about that. But what would be your range when you first wake up? What's your range? Well, let's just go back to when I first started testing. I had morning glucose numbers in the low 100s. I could be up to 100. Which that's pre diabetic, but that's pre diabetic. I know. I could be up to 115 or 16 or so. More likely I was around 109 when I first started my morning test numbers, but the more days I got under my belt and fasting um for 
waiting for that glucose number to come down. And at that time, my target was I wanted to wait until my glucose got to about 85 before I let myself have a meal. I didn't always accomplish that because I would listen to my body's comfort signals and hunger and stuff. So, um, you know, sometimes I wasn't able to wait until 85. Now, if somebody's diabetic and they've got much higher glucose numbers, they can't just go out of the gate and decide they're going to fast until they get to 85. And if they're diabetic, they need to do something like this with their doctor as their, you know, helper and whatnot, guiding them. So um, typically testing about eight times a day. And the reason for testing in my mind is it lets me know when my fuel has been used up and my body's ready for more fuel. So I'm not just always piling on more fuel for my body to store and then take in more fuel that gets stored. That's weight gain. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. So then after you ate, so then you, you did it. Let's just say, so you wanted to wait until it got to 85 for your blood sugar. That was my target, right? So then after you ate, did you wait two hours or did you take it right away? I would typically check it um, maybe an hour later out of curiosity. Um, Two hours later, we'll tell you more about what your body's processing for protein um, because you have things rise in different rates. Carbohydrates are going to have the fastest rise and the quickest fall. Proteins will still affect your glucose number, but they'll have a slower rise and a a slower fall. And fats have the least um, response of all um, on glucose. So you may not see any rise on it. But from what I've been learning from um, the Mastering Diabetes guys, Robbie um, Cyrus Kambata and Robbie Barbaro, um, it's too much fat in the diet and relying on fat as the fuel all the time it has some sort of a negative effect on our cells and actually can make us more insulin insensitive. The goal for health is to be insulin sensitive. So, you, I mean, insulin insensitive is the same thing as saying you're insulin resistant. Your, your cells can't respond to that insulin that your body is putting out. And therefore, it just, then your body puts out more insulin um, to try to get the cells to listen, to try to jam that fuel away, the glucose fuel away into where it belongs, not in your bloodstream. And so it made a lot of sense to me to pay attention to the fuel separation idea, which was what I started with, with Trim Healthy Mama. And actually it was even a couple of my earlier diets, um, way back in probably the eighties or uh, early nineties, um, the diamonds, they did fit for, fit for life or food, food for life. Um, and they did fuel separating and Suzanne's summer, summer size, that yeah. was kind of a fuel separating thing. And I just remembered, um, when I was researching fasting and I didn't want to do a low carb keto diet, cause I lived that way for 17 years. I was very grateful to find Jen Stevens content. Um, She now has three books. Um, She has Delay, Don't Deny, Feast Without Fear, and Fast, Feast, and Repeat. And I actually feel like her book title labels are part of my diet um, 
philosophy now. I, I want to be able to feast without fear of what I'm eating. I want to be able to eat all foods, all macros. Um, and I do live a life of fast, feast, and repeat. And her very first book, The Delay Don't Deny, I have said those words to myself sometimes when I thought, mentally, mentally, I just wanted to eat. And I said, no, delay. You don't have to deny yourself, just delay. Delay a little longer until that glucose comes down. And so I was That's very awesome. happy for Jen's content and her podcast because all the stories that she's sharing from other fasters who are not sp following any specific diet except what they choose to do for themselves, that has encouraged me a lot in my fasting practices. Yeah, she's amazing. And she's, if you guys haven't heard, she's been on our podcast twice, kind of giving her pearls of wisdom. So mm -hmm. Yeah. As far as the blood sugar, you know, it's funny because with my friends, we used to joke and I don't do it as much and I actually would love to bring it back in, but I would basically, we would all be at lunch and I'd be like, okay, everyone come to lunch, come fasted, you know? And then I would literally go around and have, take everyone's blood and see where they were at. And then we would eat and then we would take everyone's Oh, I love that idea. Meal. And it was just so much fun. And just so you guys know, when you're fasting, your blood sugar level should be anywhere from 70 to 100. If right. you're at 101 to 125, you're pre-diabetic. And really functional medicine doctors will say really more like 95, mm -hmm. you know, to 125, you're pre-diabetic. And then 125 or more, you on a fasting blood sugar level, you have diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I would realize is the people who after their post meal blood sugar levels, all of my friends who are the thinnest their post-meal blood sugar levels were the lowest. It was mm -hmm. just amazing. It was just, it's a fun trick to do. Have mm -hmm. all your friends do it. Go get little kits from Walgreens and have everyone do it. It's super, super fun. Well, what other tips would you give people that you would say, these are some of the things that I did? Like one of the questions we get all the time is like, I'm in a, like a lull, you know, I'm doing intermittent fasting. I'm in a lull. What kind of helped you in your journey? Well, the thing that really helped me was knowing my data because I didn't have to say, I am only going to fast for 16 hours or 18 hours or whatever. I wasn't looking at the clock to tell me when my time was up. I was looking at what was going on in my own body chemistry. And so I could see the numbers. I could take my glucose. And um, I didn't start taking ketones until a little further on in my fasting experience, but I could see the numbers and they could let me know, no, you really don't need to eat. You just want to eat. Um, I learned early on that hunger comes in waves. It doesn't last. Um, I learned to rely on salt crystals to help me feel physically comfortable during the fast. So I always keep a little um, test tube container of salt crystals that I can pop open and take, you know, a couple of them in my mouth and just taste, let that kind of dissolve in my mouth, almost like someone would a breath mint. That is uh, very helpful to me when I'm fasting. It does make me feel physically better, but it also I like that salty taste. I learned that having a sweet tasting drink, even if it didn't have any calories, was not in my best interest because the brain sends a signal. It, you taste that sweet, your brain gets the signal, it's tasted sweet. It sends a signal to the pancreas. Pancreas says, okay, food's coming in. It doesn't know it's not real food or real calories. It just got the sweet. And so you start to have an insulin response. Maybe your glucose doesn't go up at all, but you will most likely have an insulin response to that sweet taste. So thankfully about a month or less into my fasting, 
is when I found um, Jen Stevens content, Delay Don't Deny, and they were talking about the clean fast where you, you limit yourself to water, black coffee without any sweetener, so there's no sweet taste, black tea um, without any fruity flavors or spicy flavors, so your brain isn't perceiving food or sweet, um, mineral water without any flavorings in it, so um, actual mineral water that has minerals in it or sparkly mineral water or just the canned you know, sparkly water that's like club soda without a flavor to it. And that helped me a lot. It was hard in the beginning to give up cream and I probably could have kept fasting with cream in my coffee because cream is a, if you're using full fat, heavy whipping cream, it's fat. So it won't have much of a response on the glucose. But I figured I want this fat off my body. Why would I be putting it in my mouth when I want it off my body, I'm waiting to eat because I want my glucose to fall so that my insulin will fall so that my body is able to use some of my stored fuel and bring it out and turn it back into glucose and use it up. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one -on -one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to this recent review, a happy coaching client sent in. Thanks so much for your help and guidance. I never could have done it without you. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day, over and over and over again, and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Yeah, and I think the moral of what I'm hearing you say, which is so important, is that, you know, a lot of people, associate insulin with diabetes. And it's it's not just for diabetes. It's a big contributor to weight gain for everyone. So mm -hmm. if you're diabetic or not, it has to, insulin has to be tamed to successfully maintain a health, healthy weight. Right. And insulin tells our cells to take up glucose from the from the blood for use. So mm -hmm. if there's excess, right, for storage, then obviously if you've got excess, you're going to store more of it and you're, that's where your weight gain is going to come. Right. And, and so insulin really mattered to me once I understood the effect that it has on all body systems down to the tiniest capillary in your body, you are affected by insulin. And I happen to have on both my maternal and my paternal sides of family, I have cases of diabetes on one side and I have cases of heart disease on the other. And all that is tied back to insulin. Um, so I'm 59 and I know that I'm headed toward the, gr toward the grave. We're all dying, nobody's getting out of here alive, but I would like to die as gracefully as possible. I would like to have as long a health span as I have a lifespan. Um, you may have heard those two concepts, health span and lifespan. And we can live a long life, but it's not very enjoyable if our health span, health isn't not good, so that we're just sitting in a recliner watching TV because we can't even walk around our own house without a, the assistance of a walker, you know, because we're, we're ill or something. So. I'd like to live well as long as I live. Mm, I love that. And, you know, when there is more glucose in the bloodstream than what the body needs to meet energy demands, increased insulin is going to signal to the liver and to the muscles to store glucose in there. And once the liver and muscles are filled to the brim with glycogen, the excess, excess glucose is turned into fat. And really it's about us eating too much food and that excess food, you're overeating, you're overeating too much sugar and that's excess is going to be turned into fat. And 
that's the end of the story. So I just love that you're really bringing that out Mm -hmm. and really focusing on your glucose levels. It's super fun. So another thing I want to add about insulin, um, and, um, the effect it has on the body, Alzheimer's and dementia, those issues of memory loss, they are being labeled diabetes type three now. And so I did have a relative who died without knowing any member of her family. I'd like to avoid that as well. So I don't want to lose my mind. I'd like to keep my mind healthy and sharp. I'd like to keep my body functioning well. And I know that my insulin has an effect on all of that. And also I believe that insulin has an effect on cancer because there's a Dr. Thomas Seyfried who actually had the information that Dr. Uh, Bosworth, Dr. Boz, picked up on about the um, insulin ratio. Uh, She just simplified his math formula um, so that her mother, who was suffering with cancer, um, could do the calculations to know if she had gotten her insulin ratio down to 20 or not. Um, So Dr. Boz credits Dr. Thomas Seyfried for um, his information on cancer as a metabolic disease and the insulin glucose to ketone insulin ratio. Dr. Boss simplified the math for that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And if you guys like to hear more stories like this, we'd love to hear from you. So go to questions at chantelrayway.com and we'd love to hear your story and share it with the world. It's, it's just every time we hear from people, we, we learn a new nugget that we can, we can take. So thank you for your time, Lori, today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it too. And you guys stay tuned. We have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. This has been a Sempronto Media Production.